Well, another episode back here in the woods. This time it is my first overnight in my own woodland. Um, I've been here when it's dark before as I've got back late, but I've never spent the night here. So um, I'm really excited, as you can probably can tell. <laughs> got my favorite type of tent, the Polish Levu, behind me, which I've used for many years on my channel. But as well as that, it's actually looking a little bit different from when I last used it. And that's because I've had some modifications made, which I'm really excited to show you about. But um, it's a lovely, peaceful, quiet December, early December afternoon here in the woods. Uh, I had snow here last time I came, if you want to catch up on that episode. These are kind of chronological, the ones where I do here at my woodland and manage it and things. Uh, if you want to watch the previous one of that, I'll put a link in the description, but there's lots of snow. Well, I say lots of snow. Through the south of the UK, there was quite a bit. And it was, um, it was beautiful, it was really nice. So, slightly different today, it's damp, it's wet. It is fairly cold, it's about six degrees Celsius going down to about one, maybe zero uh, this evening. But um, I've got my little wood stove, little folding titanium wood stove. And uh, yeah, just cut up some firewood to keep warm. Um, I'll just show you the tent quickly. And then um, yeah, we can start cooking up some good food and enjoying my first overnight in the woods. So before I get into it, I just want to give a big shout out to a fellow called Sean, who's based up in Hull uh, here in England. And he approached me at the Bushcraft Show and said he watches the videos, really enjoys them. Uh, but basically he loves my Lavoo videos and he actually does kind of modifications for Polish Lavoos and other kind of fabric work on different tents and things like that. And um, yeah, I, I kind of sent him my Lavoo a few weeks later. He spent a couple of weeks on it and then he sent it back in the post and I was blown away by what he's done to it. So um, I'm going to put a link to Sean's work in the description below, but you can follow him on Instagram and things like that. I'll put it all in the description below because I appreciate there's a I've got a big following of Polish Lavu camping guys, so um, if you're interested in doing some of the getting some of these things done, and you maybe not don't feel like you're able to do them yourself, uh, then yeah, go and uh, look up Sean. He he does a cracking job. But let's take a look. So first things first, uh, this is one of the main things that I wanted with the Lavu when he said the different things that he could do to it, uh, and this is basically a stove jack 
previously I had used, I don't know if you can see this, but on the end of your screen here is the button holes for the Levu, for your arms to come through. And I've used it precariously with sticks before and it's worked fine, but any kind of m real heat that comes through can actually cause some damage to the material. And if the sticks slip and fall, uh, it can, well, essentially t set your tent on fire. So um, I've got away with it in the past. It's not the best thing to do, but I have got away with it. Um, but one of the main things I wanted was one of these stove jacks. So it all attaches via Velcro and it's all really well stitched on. So when it's not being used, or if you don't need to use it, you can stitch it up and then it's all totally waterproof as well. He's made it so that you can fit different diameter flues through there. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to hopefully this working tonight, but the, the uh, stove pipe here is, is touching it totally. So it'd be interesting to see whether this material actually gets hot or or what, but it's definitely a fireproof and fire resistant material. So that was one of the first things. One of the next things he does is puts on this sort of nylon webbing uh, with an adjustable strap here. And it's all really well stitched, cross stitched up here. And essentially what it means is that you can put much larger stakes through these big, big eyelets here and you can just adjust them and tighten them. And this essentially, he's added on this section here of my Levu a skirt and I think we said it was about 20 mil. He does 30 mil ones as well. But this one I asked for was 20 millimeters. So it creates like bathtub inside and gives you a lot more headroom in the Levu and also um, just keeps it from, keeps everything nice and taut. Whereas when it was before, just straight down to the ground, it never, you could never really get this material very tight. But now with these straps, you can just pull them tight and it just locks off and it holds them really tight. And yeah, nice to gain a little bit of headroom in there as well. Okay, that's probably one of my favorite additions on the Levu. If you, any guys out there who have a Polish Levu, you will know my pain when you're trying to unbutton or button up the entrances, the two Levus together. So for those that don't know, a Polish Levu is a military surplus tent that two soldiers would carry each half. So it's a poncho. Uh, this is this top bit here is actually the hood that would go over your head as a poncho so it's two soldiers ponchos that button together to form a tent and those soldiers would then sleep in that tent that's what basically what a polish levu is but this for, for example this is an, an armhole where these um where that little strip there with buttons that's where you put one of the arms and there'd be one the other side so there's four overall i used to put the stove through there but um yeah i wouldn't recommend that in the future but that zip is a game changer. So much easier to get in and out, to do up. You don't have to worry about gaps in the tent and uh, rain getting in. It's just so much better. So he's done a really good job there. really appreciate that, Sean. Another addition he's done is this D-ring up here on a loop, which means that if you want to eliminate the center pole inside the tent and have much more space, you can hang this from a branch protruding from a tree, hopefully a sturdy branch, and it just means that you can eliminate that middle pole and get much more space inside the Labu. So that's a really good little addition. I'm not using that today, I'm using the center pole, but in the future I will use that one. One of the other additions, which you can't really see yet, but is hanging on the inside of the tent, is a clip, which you can hang a light or a lantern from for the inside of your Labu, and this is adjustable, so you can have it lower or higher using this strap here. So that's really handy as well. And we'll show you that later when it's a bit darker. Finally, where this skirt is, and you can see if I lower the camera there, the height of the skirt, where that is, there is a much better loop. It used to be that you had to try and get pegs through these tiny eyelets, metal eyelets around the Levu, and it was just a nightmare and sometimes they would snap. But Sean has put in these massive, much better, I mean, I'm using the old pegs, but a much better D loop there all cross-stitched so really pleased and that's the sort of height there you go you can see the height of what the skirt would be and it's made it much better inside which I'll show you later or maybe in a minute so let's take a look inside I've just put a ground sheet down there at the moment um, just to keep things dry and also that's where I'm gonna sleep on that side the stove is here this side going out through the stove jack there um, I tend to face the door of the stove towards the entrance of the tent because then I can control even more airflow by opening and closing the zip of the tent and it just helps with airflow with the stove if it struggles but way way more room 
than previously. So much more room in here. Can't tell you guys how much is how much bigger it is just with that small 20mm raised skirt on the side. Really pleased. Normally when I sit up in a lavoo, I'm not too far from the top of the tent, but I've got easily another 20, 25 inches maybe above my head. And lying down, the lavoo is no longer <laughs> on my face here. I've got a lot more space to roll and move and for my gear. So for that little bit of extra material, yes, it's a little bit bulkier, but just so much easier, so much nicer. Anyway, enough yabbering for me, folks. Time to get this stove going before it gets dark. It's already 3 p.m., so I've got an hour. now in what is much more spacious Lavu, even with this center pole. Got my wood stove there, split a load of wood up, I've stacked it, you can't really see but it's on top of the Lavu cover. There you go, all there. So it's on top of that to keep the wood 
dry from sucking up the moisture in the ground. It's not too close to the stove to ignite it. This is going away perfectly now. I've shut down the valve, the uh, front air intake, and it is ticking away beautifully. It's absolutely roasting in it. I've just done a little tidy up. I've got so much space to what I'm normally used to. Little lantern over there for some backlight. Here's where I'm going to cook in a minute. Got some magazines and books, more food. This is where I'm going to sleep. Yeah, chuff with this setup. It's got a bit of onion, garlic, um, red pepper for the time being. I'm going to make some sort of stew, Spanish inspired, but with the chorizo. One can of tinned tomatoes, or chopped tomatoes, sorry. So normally I'd add spinach to this, but the um, for some reason the local kind of supermarket just sells them in such ridiculous sized plastic wasting bags. I went to go to the farm shop and they were shut. And I was like, I'm not having that stupid amount of wasted plastic from the uh, supermarket, so I've gone without. So we let that get, come to the boil. And then I've got some herbs and a bit of stock as well to add to that. And we should be letting that cook away for 20 minutes or so, half an hour, over an hour long. I want really. It's lovely, I can hear an owl out there in the distance. It's just so hot, I've had to leave the tent open, the tent door. Just silly how hot it is with these small tents and these wood stoves. Okay. Let that shouldn't take long to suddenly go boom. So far, the stove jack is hot in the black area, but all doing its job, and there's no smoke seeping out of the stove pipe, which is the most important thing. There we go. A little bit hot. Yep. There we go. Oh no, it's going. It's starting to bubble now, just about. Uh, I've got some pepper, rock salt, dried thyme. Uh, I can't remember what else. Maybe basil. I can't remember. But that's that's going to go in there. Stir that in. Chicken stock paste. This one. This is from um, that Hello Fresh company. We got a few the other day. Me and the wife, and uh, got a few ideas for recipes. This wasn't in it, but plenty of salt in um, stock. So I've brought a lot of water with me. We are comfortably warm. In fact, I'm a bit warm in this wool top. So this is my Spanish inspired stew. It's still piping hot, um, but I've actually let it cool down for a bit. 
this time because I never normally do but yeah I'll put the recipe the link to the recipe for this in the description below it was a bit of a mishmash but I love these one pot meals and the especially in the winter they're just great oh and before before I tuck in it would be rude not to I've brought a few books with me to read sounds nerdy I know but lately I've just uh I've been doing a lot of reading just love it all sorts of different types of reading not just uh bushcraft books and woodland management books and things like that but I often read uh like fantasy novels and things sort of like kind of like Lord of the Rings type stuff for a bit of escapism I love all that stuff but yeah I'm very impressed with the Lavoo so far I have to admit with this this much space I was actually just um talking to Sean uh, I sent him a picture and he was like Mike you should have raised it up like higher than what it is so that the skirt is more effective and the material goes tighter and he showed me some pictures of his and I was like hmm I definitely didn't set it up <laughs> in the right way I set it up how I'd normally set up the old Lavu, but yeah there's I'll overlay some pictures now of his uh how it's meant to be done guys probably um but all it is is where I've used the stock pole that comes with the Lavu. Um, where he's added the skirt, obviously it needs to be a longer pole, so I'll just cut some wood to length a bit higher and it can get a bit more tension. That way there's no sag. But, um, I mean, even when the previous, when there was no modifications done, um, there was always a sag in the, the Lavu, and it was fine, even in strong winds, it was really good. Absolutely love this shelter. Cheers, guys. It's a pleasure to have you on board on this first overnighter in my woodland. Very excited. Uh, with a wood stove, that's the way to do it. The wood stove and a canvas tent and some good food and a beer. Got a stout. Right, let's tuck in. So good. Honestly, this is one of my favourite one-pot meals. I will... Uh, just remind me, if I forget to put it in the description, guys, can you just remind me? Because I always say it in the video and then I forget to put it in. So if I haven't put it in, just let me know. I was worried I hadn't set chopped up enough firewood for later, uh, for tonight. But I definitely got enough because I've got some round, full round pieces there as well. Um, but I want to keep some for the morning to split up so it's just easier to get the fire going. Yeah, I'll try and put links to the gear and everything in the description below. Are any of you guys doing camping at the moment? I'm hoping a lot of you are managing to get out. I've got a bit of a like, <coughs> excuse me, blocked nose. And like sinuses at the moment. I thought coming to the woods might come and clear that. Clear that. It's not COVID, don't worry. Well, it's now 10 o'clock. And as you can see, the stove is probably going to need a couple more logs um it's getting a bit a bit burnt out i've been reading and distracted so i'm going to put a few more on and then just leave it let it burn out it's so hot i've had to have the door open for pretty much the whole evening um it's just a bit too hot i think if it was maybe minus drop below zero degrees celsius then it you know i could zip it up but at the moment it's hovering around two so it's just not cold enough to uh, warrant having them shut but it's due to rain at some point in the morning as well early morning so once that starts to cool down a little bit I'll probably hear the rain and zip that up but it's been a lovely evening I'm enjoying it just very tired now so I'm gonna get some sleep if anything happens in the night I will let you guys know but if not I'm really hoping I can sleep through
Morning folks. Slept pretty good, except woke a few times when the rain came. Uh, that was about four in the morning. I didn't pull the big camera out. I decided to just grab my phone and um, just film it hitting the tent. It's quite, it was quite soothing actually, although it didn't soothe me off to sleep. But it was nice to hear it. Um, gave the tent a good test. Nothing came through at all. I've been in this tent load, so it really doesn't leak water at all. Uh, but it's, yeah, it was just nice. So, yeah, not a bad sleep. Got some baking going. Got the stove on, obviously. Got the morning coffee. The morning routine. That's where hot tent, like hot tenting with a tent and a wood stove is so good because you can just get your firewood ready for the next day. Light it up nice and quickly. And these little titanium stoves just get going so fast and they get hot so fast that you can start boiling water and cooking a lot quicker than you can on a, on a stainless steel stove. Disadvantages are they're expensive and they can warp and bend when they're, um, when they're really hot, whereas stainless steel just stays pretty rigid. But for me, this is a couple of times, I've used this a few times now and I'm, I'm pleased with it. This Pomoly, Pomoly Mini T1, I think it's called. I'll put a link in the description. But yeah, so much more room in this Levu. I'm really pleased. I'm really pleased with the modifications that Sean has made. And more importantly, I'm really pleased to have spent the first night in my woodland. It's been amazing. The sun's kind of just coming up over the clouds there. I'll get some shots in a minute. But it's been so nice and it's so peaceful here. I could hear deer in the night, so many owls. I'm definitely gonna do something with some owl boxes because I can hear loads of owls. Um, and I could hear where it's so in this area of the beach that I'm in where there's so many leaves I could just hear the deer just walking through slowly and crunching the leaves and it's just awesome it's what, it's what camping in the woods is all about super pleased exciting times look at this folks beautiful sunrise in my woodlands, my first sunrise here ever. That is stunning. Nice to know where the sun comes up in the winter. I actually thought it'd come a little bit more over there, but that's where it's popped up from. Almost all the leaves are off the trees now, just a few clinging on to some of the oaks, which tends to be the last to drop them. But look at this. And there is my tent and you can see if I raised it up and tightened it like Sean was saying it wouldn't collect water on the lip like that because it would be more of a, an angle but still look it's soaking wet and it's not wet at all inside absolutely love it nice to see some bits of holly nice quite big bits as well this time of year Christmas time that's awesome to see. Gives good cover for mammals, small mammals and birds. So That's a nice loaded bacon sarnie. I use these copper wires uh, in addition to the the main one, the main uh, rings there, O-rings, just to give a bit more security and making sure that flue is definitely sealed up so no smoke comes out. 
and I do, if you're wondering, have a carbon monoxide alarm with me in the tent, always. Give back to nature with the ash, just bury it and then put some leaves on top and that'll all help with the old nurturing of the ground. The various trees and the soil that will do well from that. I'm going to keep these stakes for if ever I do another camp again with a canvas tent or any tent in these wood pegs. And it's time for me to say goodbye. So thank you for watching this episode. Thank you for those who are following the channel, following along on the journey. I do really appreciate it. Uh, over the next couple of weeks, it won't just be this wooden. I'm gonna do some other stuff as well to mix it up, but thank you. Thank you for joining me on this. There's lots of new people, so cheers. I'll see you in the next one.